Okay, so let's start. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning to everyone. Um, welcome to this uh, COP, it will be the last one of uh, this year. And um, today uh, we will be uh, going over um, a presentation of the access mode next gen that I will just explain in a bit. So I will um, I will appreciate if everyone can keep their uh, mic muted and uh, please, if possible, just put your um, name and affiliation in the in the Zoom details. If you need help, just write in the chat. Somebody will see you. Uh, next slide, please. Exactly. Can next slide. Okay, so we will have a walk through uh, access mode, uh, more focused on the access mode next generation. And we will have an announcement uh, from our colleague uh, Hoko from UNICEF um, that he will uh, explain about what it is. And, uh, and now I would like to uh, please press, press the next slide. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I presented myself. I don't know if everyone already knows me. My name is Anna Lorenzo from GIS Center at W2. Um, and for this presentation, we will have um, Boudou and Carlos. I will kindly pass the word to them. I would like them to present themselves and then to go over the presentation. Um, Boudou, Carlos, are you here with us? Hi. Uh, it's just, yes, I'm here. Uh, Budur is just having a problem connecting. Okay. So she's trying to solve the issue, but it's, it's, uh, at the moment, for some reason, she's unable to connect. I will ask our, co our um, facilitators from Dev Global to help with that. But now I think you can move on and then we'll try to solve it in the background. Yes. Um, <laughs> good. Well, uh, officially, she is the one that is going to present the to give the presentation. Uh, I will start by introducing myself. Then, um, as you see here, uh, as you see. Um, I'm a geospatial health analyst, um, now working at the GIS Center for Health. I joined WHO very recently, just uh, at the end of October. Um, and I've been working also with the University of Geneva while doing my PhD and um, also right now in the developing of access mode. Um, and, uh, uh, well, I've been, well, my background is uh, in biology, in biostatistics, and um, uh, my PhD is in biomedical sciences, that what was I was doing with the U University of Geneva. Um, and oh. well, I've been uh, working in many different fields from, uh, as I said, from biology in, in the Amazon rainforest, uh, then with forestry, with uh, uh, invasive species, and in also in statistics with different topics, and most recently analyzing vulnerability and risk of snake bite and access to health in uh, for snake bite in Nepal. Um, for for I don't know, uh, Anna, do you know anything uh, any? Bodur, how she has been managing to access. It's apparently is requesting a specific access for her. I'm waiting for feedback from Suzanne uh, or um, Albertine. Uh, do you have any news? No, I. The only thing I, I know is that uh, Zoom. The Zoom is asking to sign in, but. Yes, yes, I'm asking Albertine and uh, Suzanne that are okay. actually helping facilitate the COP if they manage to add uh, Boudou because they are the hosts. Yes, okay. I'm um, on my end, I'm trying to send a link that um, Boudou could access automatically. I'm so sorry. 
um, the settings didn't switch automatically, but um, I'm sending a note to Bodor right now. I don't know if it's possible to change mid-meeting, but can we remove the login restrictions um, as we're going? Um, so the, the setting on my end is, is already changed. So I'm not sure um, if it was just, if we needed to change the link entirely. Um, so I'm trying to see if I can send a new link that doesn't include that login. Because, yeah, I'm not sure that you can change it automatically. Yeah, let's work now on sending the invitation to Budu because we really need her to continue. Yeah. The <laughs> okay. Let me know how it goes. Okay. Okay. Apologies for this little delay. Um, Voodoo should be joining us briefly. Let me see if she's. This is says something like the host requires authentication. I'm, I don't know. Anyway. Carlos, would you be able to start? Yeah, I think I could. I could try to uh, start let's, let's, describing. Uh, yeah, let's go Do you have the slides? Because I don't have them, so. Yes, uh, Dev Global is uh, uh, passing the slides, so we just need to say next. Okay, uh, so. Okay. Yes. Okay, so, uh, well, yeah, we, or at least Bodur, they, 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 in the team, they have been working on the access mode next generation that is um, development of a new tool um, or the, the new version of a tool that has existed already for about 20 years that is called access mode and is uh, software developed uh, in uh, in a, in a uh, joint work with WHO for uh, many years and the University of Geneva to uh, model and analyze accessibility to health services. Next. Uh, okay, so one well, one of the goals of uh, measuring accessibility is well identify uh, how the population uh, would, what is the access of the population to different type of services um, what is the coverage uh, how long uh, they need to reach one of these uh, fac health facilities or services um, and also it can be uh, used for many different other purposes like the distribution of services or in, in our case for Snakebite, the uh, distribution of antivenom between facilities. And one of the goals is of course, uh, improve and optimize this allocation of resources and uh, improve the coverage of the population um, especially for highly vulnerable uh, groups of, of the population and identify the uh, facilities that are uh, either overloaded or uh, working um, like under um, their normal capacity and try to optimize the distribution of resources to cover as much people as possible. Next. So uh, this is like uh, the structure or idea of the catchment uh, of how one facility covers the population. And in the first image, you see 
the traditional view of catchment and how in many places has been done and how it's used. Uh, that is just the facility in the center and there is a radius of five or 10 kilometers and uh, it's considered that that is the catchment area of a facility. However, that is very unrealistic. And uh, in the second image in B, you see that if you consider other elements like uh, mountains, forests, lakes, rivers, roads, all these type of elements, the, uh, the, the catchment area of one facility is modified in different ways and is limited in some ways and is uh, extended in some others, depending on, on how easy is to have is, is the access to that uh, facility. Access mode uh, also includes another characteristic in is this anisotropic movement, uh, which considers the um, effect of slope uh, either downhill or uphill to um, accelerate or decelerate the movement of people, especially when they are walking or cycling. And that uh, is the that that's why in C you see that uh, going from the mountain to the facility uh, is going downhill. So the the area that can be covered is larger. And finally, in D, the, this image considers also the capacity of that facility, how much that facility can cover in, in the number of people. So that might, in some sense, also reduce the, the catchment of that area, even to suboptimal uh, areas. But in this case, uh, it's a more realistic version of it. So I see Bodu is already here. If you want to continue, I can give you the floor. Hi, hi everyone. Sorry for being late. Uh, just a problem in signing in and so on. So uh, you can continue if you want to, Carlos. Talk to you. No, it's, it's fine. I mean, if you feel okay, then. Okay, go ahead. fine. So uh, hi everyone, this is Wudur and I, I'm a project manager in the GIS Center for Health and uh, uh, managing the access more next generation. So you can move to the next slide. Okay, so uh, actually access mode is, uh, what is access mode? Access mode is uh, like a free tool, multi-open system, open source system, and uh, a combination of sets of GIS tools designed for optimizing the access to uh, the health services and support the universal health coverage. So we have different uh, analysis that we can achieve and uh, apply into the uh, using this tool. The most and the first and the most important analysis is the accessibility analysis. So here we can uh, we can calculate the travel time and assess how physically accessible that the health services to the target population using the travel time, the minutes, and not the, the, not the uh, kilometers or the, not the meters, as uh, Carlos was just mentioned. So uh, here is the access mode, uh, most important analysis. The other one is like the geographical coverage analysis. So here uh, we can uh, mention that the uh, uh, calculate the catchment area of the and the, the uh, health facility um, capacity to uh, uh, have the all the, the people around the, the catchment population around to have access to this health facility. Uh, the referral analysis. So here, if we need to refer the patients between two health facilities, so also this tool can provide us this measurement. Uh, the zonal statistics as the, the um, value of population covered with a health facility. So here it gives us the percentage of population that has access to the health facilities uh, within the travel time that we set. 
The final one is like scaling up analysis. Uh, uh, this is a, a very important as well and complex uh, analysis that can uh, clarify if we need to change the location of health facility, we need to add a new health facility in, in, in specific location, or we need to close one. So he, here it can, it can uh, adjust our plan and our health service plan. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, the uh, this is a very old tool, and the, the first uh, thought started in two thousand two, uh, with like uh, uh, activity in a cost-effective analysis by WHO, and it started regular uh, uh, gradually improved until we reached to the uh, current uh, release of uh, version five point six, which is the current desktop version of Access Mode. And now in 2022, we decided to also to move to uh, access more next generation. And we finalized the phased one. And now we go now through why we did that, what are the differences and similarities and the advantages of the next generation one. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, here's like, you can see the, the uh, this is the tool. And as you know, this is a W2O tool, uh, open source, free, multi uh, uh, open systems. And uh, uh, in the web uh, website that you can see, uh, there's like tutorials in English and guidance in English and French, and some some uh, uh, publications that you can go through. Uh, so it's step by step, teaching all every single uh, uh, step in, in in guidance in this analysis. Next, please. Okay, so what are the geospatial data that we need for, for access mode? The first and the most important thing is the coordinates of health facilities, which is the maybe the most difficult one is to specify the location of the health facility or the service and medical service that we need. A second one is the population distribution. And also we need a road network and usually we get it from the open street map. Uh, we need also the admin boundaries. Uh, we need the rivers that, that the rivers usually can, can, uh, uh, can consider as a barriers. We need the land cover and the elevation. So we can see the, 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 uh, the speed, the, if we have mountain, if we have hills. So here also we can adjust the speed. All these information need to be uh, uh, obtained and entered into access mode in order to calculate the travel time. Next slide, please. Okay, so just like this is an example of if we want to calculate the travel time based on uh, based on like the, the five kilometer buffer. Here you can see the, the uh, brown circles. So the population coverage, if we use this uh, method, it can be uh, about 38% uh, of population coverage. But if we see that uh, we use the travel time, so the percentage of population coverage with one hour travel time is 67.5%. So here you can see that we need to move from the meters to minutes, and this is the most applicable uh, methodology to use for uh, calculating the accessibility. Next, please. Okay, so uh, here, what are the outputs that we get from access mod? So we can get tables, uh, we can, for zonal statistics, uh, these tables can be downloaded and, and created through maps or graphs. Uh, the most important thing is we need also we can get travel time distribution. So based on the different scenarios can be walking and motorized vehicles or walking only walking vehicles only. So here also you can see so with pixels and pixels, it can uh, calculate the travel time. Also, uh, e with a scaling up, it can show us where exactly we need to add new health facility or new medical service to, uh, to I mean, uh, uh, reduce the burden of uh, uh, accessibility in for the catchment area. 
Next, please. Okay, so the users, where we can use access mode. Actually, we can use it in all the services, such as routine immunization, uh, COVAX vaccine delivery, uh, antivenom uh, uh, locations. So we use it a lot in, 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 in our snake bite project. Uh, the location of bed net di distribution for malaria or for visceral leishmaniasis. Uh, very important, like University of Geneva, they worked a lot with uh, uh, the distribution of community health workers. Even we can uh, we can use it for the warehouse locations or for the suppliers locations. In addition to all types of health facilities. Next, please. Okay, so for uh, this is uh, here we have text that it's gone, maybe. So uh, just like an uh, uh, overview of uh, the um, where access mode has been implemented. So we have the University of Geneva and the, the GeoHealth Lab uh, in both Africa and Asia, uh, worked with the Ministry of Health, uh, health actors to map different services. And uh, it was implemented, this tool was implemented in more than 30 countries for mater mainly for maternity services, HIV, malaria, uh, the health services uh, before and after crisis, what difference, what, is, what are the differences in Mozambique in addition to distribution of uh, community health workers. Next, please. Okay, so uh, here we can mention about the new tool that we started implementing in, uh, or like we started uh, working on creating uh, in January, 2022. So this is a, a web-based tool that uh, is accessible, like free also, free of free tool. And uh, we finalized the first phase of this tool. Next please, uh, next uh, slide. Okay, so uh, what are the advantages of this tool and why we, we uh, go through this, uh, the, the, this release or this uh, uh, web-based uh, part of the access mode. Actually, the desktop version, first, uh, we need to install the virtual machine. Second, it sometimes requires a powerful computer to assess all of this information. And uh, also, we added uh, different advantages, such as cloud computing. Uh, we, uh, we have created uh, also um, another analysis for normal users who doesn't who don't have that GIS experience. Uh, it also um, cover the collaborative features. So it, in within the teams, we can have different teams working on the similar project, uh, data visualization, and we have automated data acquisition. Next, please. Okay. So for both access mode, desktop, and next generation, they have the same methodology and algorithms uh, that uh, uh, we are like using the cost distance analysis uh, for calculating the travel time. So what are the differences? Uh, with the cloud base, as we are planning to uh, host this web tool into CERN server, CERN server, we allow multiple users that can use the application at the same time. Also, a single user can use uh, can do multiple analyses without any problem, and uh, they we don't need that powerful computer, and uh, uh, the application can support hundreds of uh, concurrent. For the collaborative collaborative features, each team can hack and work on the same project. We can have also, uh, we can share the project results within teams or within organizations. Uh, this is also another difference. The third one is the automated data acquisition. So the, the web-based tool enables the users to get the data from outsources. For example, we can get the, the uh, uh, data from OpenStreetMap, uh, WordPub. So here the user either can go through the, the usual uh, method or the advanced method with preparing the data and entering it to the to the tool, or they can acquire it from 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 outsource, or they can use it 
in within hybrid. So I can put my data and inquire other data that, that I don't have from open sources. The data visualization here in this tool uh, uh, enables to show the outcome, the output, in addition to the data that I am uh, uploading. So I can see the, the, the roads that I'm uploading, the, the population, et cetera, uh, and I can visualize them. Next slide, please. So what happened until now, from January until February? So we created the back, the back end, the pipeline, the web application for access mode. So everything is ready. And uh, the, uh, like we use the uh, Python as programming language. And we achieved two analyses, which is the accessibility analysis and the zonal statistics. And we got many data resources. Next slide, please. Okay, so for digital elevation, model we got the, uh, uh, we got it from shutter radar topographic mission uh, we got as well like the uh, a water surface from open street map the roads from open street maps and uh, in, in addition to population from the word pop and also we are planning to add the, the dhis2 for, uh, for as a resource for health facilities next Okay, so what are the plans? Uh, now we are working to continue and complete the geographical coverage, the referral and scaling up analysis, add more collaborative feature, uh, add like context and guidance, deploy the, the, the tool in, into CERN server. Next, please. Uh, another planned uh, uh, idea is to get more resources, more data resources other than DHIS2 and uh, other than uh, for population as well, uh, uh, maybe can we can get to from Facebook. So we are investigating other uh, data resources for uh, not only for health facilities, but also for other, um, most importantly, roads uh, and uh, uh, other input data. We are planning as well to integrate the, the access mode with other accessibility tools such as Geopod and the ramp. Uh, so uh, users can use the data from the Geopod if it's ex applicable or accessible. The other idea to produce accessibility maps. Uh, so, so people who are interested in, in, in specific maps, which is allowed, like public allowed, publicly allowed, so they can use these accessibility maps as well. Uh, next, please. Uh, this is this is like the uh, outcome from a uh, travel time access mode next generation. So here uh, we can see in Nigeria the health facilities where are the distribution of the health facilities and the travel time. You can see the color the color and here the the the, uh, the legends. Uh, actually, <clears throat> the uh, this is driving uh, module and this is walking module as well. So uh, uh, here you can see one of the examples. Next, please. This is another another example for the uh, population coverage. So the, the black dots are the health facilities. So you can see, for example, this district uh, have like covered 99%, while for example, uh, this one is like uh, uh, covers only 65% of the population. Next, please. So that's all for uh, from the theoretical part. And before we go to the demo, uh, I would like to have any question that if you if you have any question, happy to answer. Hi, Anna. Derek here from Yes, please. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. It's great to see the technology around catchment boundary mapping improve. Um, we have been involved in, in some similar work. Um, I'm interested around the um, the use case for providing um, uh, providing insights to the Ministry of Health to adjust their health facility locations or add the next, you know, other health facilities to their existing health facilities. Um, have you got a use case of where you've actually done that? Um, or is it more 
uh, looking at mapping the catchments of community health workers and locating community health workers. Uh, I just know that there's uh, community health workers are a lot easier to move around and to adjust year on year, but health facilities tend to be um, tend to be harder to to advise on where those are going. So if you've got any experience uh, around that, that would be really useful to hear. I can maybe yes, try please, to please start us. Yeah. So uh, the team of the University of Geneva and also some other colleagues that uh, work at the World Fund, I think, they have mostly recently worked with uh, health community workers. Uh, the traditional work actually is more with facilities and Mm, I cannot tell you at the top of my head publications, but if you go to the website of Access Mode, there is a long list of uh, publications all related to Access Mode, and several of them um, have deal with the optimization of health facilities, and especially that scale up analysis that is uh, one of the tools. So in some cases that I remember is actually reducing the number of facilities because some of them are actually not, uh, like are in a way redundant and are not uh, providing a service that actually increases the, the amount of population covered. And even if the population coverage reduces by let's say a few percentage points, uh, the costs are optimized because uh, maybe you can pass from a hundred facilities being um, maintained to 80, something like that. So the resources can be better distributed. But yeah, there, there, are, there are a lot of um, components in that uh, is like an index that is constructed in access mode, at least the, the desktop version that has right now that, that tool uh, runs all the models possible and then gives you suggestions of, of locations for new facilities or, or uh, other options. Thank you, Carlos. And um, my, I might uh, add one point is like, it's not only the health facility, it's the uh, health uh, service. So sometimes, for example, uh, you need the health service for leishmaniasis or for malaria. And when like you can adjust like, oh, is this uh, uh, location is like endemic with malaria or like uh, uh, leishmaniasis or not? So do you need this service in the health facility? So sometimes it's not like the whole uh, 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 is the construction of the health facility, maybe a service. So also this can be adjusted. Thank you. A, a okay. question, uh, Budur. Uh, this is Rocco from UNICEF uh, headquarters. I've uh, been working with access, with the previous version of Access Mod uh, quite, quite extensively. And uh, one of the, and it's great to see this, uh, you know, possibly improved uh, uh, computing possibilities that, that this will, will allow. Uh, one of the things that uh, we really struggled in the past was the computation time, uh, especially when we're running the analysis over, over uh, big countries. Um, and um, one of the hope was that, uh, like you were mentioning, the, the having the tapping into the parallel computing uh, possibility on the cloud uh, would uh, reduce that. So I was interested in, in if, if there was a change, if you were able to kind of uh, look at the, how much uh, the, the new version can reduce the computing time uh, with respect to, to the previous uh, uh, desktop-based uh, version. Um, and, and another thing I wanted to mention was um, when we did workshops in countries to 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 use access mod for uh, for example micro planning purposes and for uh, informing programs we 
there was really a strong need for involvement uh, of the um, uh, you know local authorities uh, for them to really understand uh, what the output is and what the consequences of some of the input data are. Uh, for example, you know the, a, a missing road or a missing river from the data set can have a huge impact at the local level on the catchment areas. Um, not when you look at it at a national level, but certainly when you look at the more, you know, when you're showing this to a district, uh, to a district level. So, um, yeah, I, I think uh, one thing to 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 consider is uh, uh, that uh, there, there's even if we plug in, you know, global data sets into it, that the, 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 there'll still be a need to uh, really uh, train users on not taking uh, some of the output of the analysis of face value and and make sure that some of the crucial input data sets and the consequences of using, for example, incomplete OSM data might have on the final analysis. It's just, just, a, just a word of caution and, and, and advice. Over. Okay, thank you, Rocco. Uh, Carlos, do you want to start? Um, yeah, sure. Well, uh, regarding the testing, um, since the online version still uh, only has two tools and we're still in progress of development, um, we are in the process of testing uh, and the speed um, is one of the issues that has to be um, analyzed. Um, I know that, well, as you also probably know, the, the more uh, referral or scale up analysis are the ones that the analysis that take more time in the desktop version. And the great advantage of the online tool is, is that the, the possibility of having uh, a server running that remotely and that you receive an email when the analysis is done. So you can just leave it running. Um, and run in parallel several several analysis. So so that that would be a great advantage. But the um, um, benchmark of of speeds or differences in 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 computation speed we have we have not done that yet. And I don't know. Well, with I guess your remark on on the micro planning and, and how to consider the, 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 the characteristics of each analysis, it's more uh, a comment, or I don't know if I, you had more like a question, but otherwise I didn't catch. Or well, more, I would say if, if there, you know, there will be training, training, um, educational material included as part of the platform, that, that, that that's something that should probably be considered to, to warn you or uh, you know, to not take uh, OSM data at face value, especially on the local level, and to ensure that, uh, you know, they, there's a quality verification of the, and that they're made aware of the consequences of uh, the quality of the data to the output of the analysis when looked at a very local level. So, yeah. Just... Yeah, I think that has to be considered, and it's it's quite important in general for all users to to keep in mind that the, those those factors in in the even though many of the of the data sets are um considered the the last ones in in and uh, that are verified maybe Boudou can can give some more details on the on the uh, future integration of of the DHS and all that um, but yeah, it's anyway um, important factors to consider. Thank you. Sure, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hoko, also. Uh, and thank you for all the questions. I think we should move on because we still have the demos also to do and uh, we are running short. Okay, okay so uh, let me start the demo. Uh, uh, uh. Can you see my screen? Oops. 
Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes, okay. I can see it. Okay, so, so first of all, what you need is like, I think you already started uh, asking for request. So this is the, uh, this is the, the first page or the landing page until now. This is very basic. Uh, everything is going to be changed. So from here, you can request an access. You can put your email, first name and last name, and then, then you can request an account. Very importantly that you can check your junk emails because many times it comes to the junk. So then we will approve all their your requests and then you can receive a username and a password. So then, sorry. Then here uh, you, we can go to, so where is it? Okay. Let me put this down. Okay. So here, first of all, this is the this is the landing page, and here where we can you can start a new project. Here is the collaborative team that uh, I mentioned. So here we have the uh, the this team is GIS, and we have, for example, nine members. You can choose between admin and regular. And we are planning as well to have super admin. So people who can, uh, uh, the, for example, people sitting at the head of, of the, the organization or head of the, this, the, the place where they can also manage these admins. So you can add a member, you can invite a member, you can remove members, you can change. So this is the collaborative feature for time being and we are planning to improve it. And then we can go to projects. Uh, and first of all, you can create a new project. So uh, first, maybe we can mention like here, test. And then we can select a country. For example, you can select Malawi here as, uh, as a testing. And then we can continue, next. So uh, here for our uh, project, either we can upload a raster to automatically configure our new project, or we can specify the spatial resolution coordinate reference system. And this is like automatically to, uh, taken based on like the country. So this is correct. Maybe here we can change or we can continue usually we, we let's work on this, or maybe we can upload them as a raster. So I'll go for this, for example. So here I need to upload my data sets and uh, where I can start, for example, the most important part is the digital elevation model. So here I can upload it from my data sets. So here is my dem, everything that they are, uh, we will share with you all the data for testing. And then here you can see that uh, it's invalid. So sorry for, so let's go for this. Let me do another one. Let me upload it. Okay, and let me upload, for example, the first one, which is the dem. Okay, so here, we validate the, the, the system in, in, in able to validate the, the, the data that we are uploading. And then we can go to the land cover and upload the land cover. It will go also to the same process. 
then we will go to, to the roads, transport network, and we can up upload our roads. Here, just like it's now, we need to mention label, but this one is like, uh, we need to, uh, we are working to remove it. So it will be improved in the phase two. And then we can add rivers as barriers. So water. Okay, then we can add another barrier, for example, which is the wetland. Just close it so. And then the population. Then the most important is the health facilities. Then we're gonna start for the first accessibility analysis. As you see now, we have only two analyses, the accessibility and the zonal statistics. So here we can have the same name. So here, what we can mention, like we uploaded our data and we're gonna choose them. So we uploaded the digital elevation model, the land cover, the transportation network, as you can see here, it, you can automatically acquire. So even if you have some data and you need some data from, to, from open source also, you can get it, but it can be also hybrid. And we have the water and we have the wetlands. Here also we are we are working to have more than one barriers. Uh, so this also will be implemented. Then the layer priority, we will add the layer priority from the top to the bottom. So the, 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 the first one will be the most important and usually it should be roads. And we can say all classes, so it's up to you. You can you can choose if you if your uh, priority is only main road, secondary, tertiary. So it's up to you. So here in our demo, we'll use all the roads. And then the second one can, could be rivers. A third one could be uh, wetlands and maybe the land cover. So here it's up to you as well. Land cover will choose all classes. So health facilities, we already uploaded them. And for the travel scenario, either you can add it based on, on like the information you have. And here in our demo, uh, we'll upload it from CSV. So these are the moving speeds. So here you can see like main road, secondary, tertiary. So here also it's based on the context, based on the country, you can adjust. And then for, for us op optional settings, until now we have only isotropic, we don't have this uh, yet. And uh, uh, we can run. So it will be queued and then after uh, it, uh, it finishes, it will send you an email that your analysis has successfully continued or done or et cetera. So um, just like not to wait so much, let me show you the same analysis that I've done before. This is the accessibility analysis. And here we can see the travel time. So here's like the travel time for Malawi. So the, the white or the, the bright area where like, we have uh, health facilities and then it can go uh, far based on this legend. Uh, 
you can see these pixels. Also, we are going to improve our visualization. And this is the holes that you can see is like uh, areas out of the, the 360 or 59 minutes. So here's like, it didn't take it because, because it's out of that. So uh, until now, uh, do you have any question for the demo? We're gonna continue, but like only for this analysis. But there are a couple of questions in the chat. Mm. I yeah, don't know if yeah. you... I, I, I've got a quick question. Uh, I think the experiences in countries like Malawi, I'm from Malawi right now, I think that there are issues to do with our digitalization. Uh, to what level of confidence would you, I think in terms of accessibility, would you give this analysis? Um, I didn't hear you very well. Can okay. you... So, so if the analysis takes into account the road network, right? Yes. And uh, to some level, uh, countries like Malawi haven't done much digitalization of the road network. And uh, my assumption is that the analysis depends on the digitalization of the, of the uh, road network. So I was just asking like, uh, much as we've got the analysis, but uh, uh, like uh, for users, say somebody who wants to use it for planning, like what level of confidence that they have with that kind of accessibility? Or maybe those are issues people will, need to, uh, will have to consider as well. Yes. Uh, so here, uh, actually, our roads, you mean the roads only for the roads? Um, especially for, for the barriers and in, in the road network. Uh, that's what I'm considering. That uh, in terms of digi digitalization, like uh, I'm not sure if we've got uh, that much data. Uh, because uh, I know my experience is sometimes you use a GPS and uh, you end up in a swamp, yes. but you also end up at the house, right? Yeah. So I'm just, I mean, thinking that in terms of uh, the level of confidence in the uh, accessibility, or is there additional work somebody will have to do to make sure that at least they've got uh, good quality data for them to actually do this analysis? Yeah, you're right. So uh, our main resource is like open street maps. And sometimes like when you're working in within country as like the University of Geneva did, uh, they, uh, the, maybe the mysteries or the local people, they can, they can uh, guide the, the users or also for the roads. This is first. The second, like your idea is, uh, is like in, on, in plans. So we are trying to find a way to uh, uh, verify the roads using the GPS. And uh, uh, still this is in discussion. We didn't uh, uh, get exactly the, 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 the action, the exact action, but we are discussing of using the GPS as well. Uh, I think Afro, the, the countries, they have different applications for this. And uh, we are planning as well to use um, their expertise in this way to verify at least the roads. For the other barriers, some, something like as rivers, I think it, it won't be changed that much, uh, but um, everything needs to be optimized. And I think Carlos can uh, can give examples on, on the work that uh, University of Geneva did in the implementation for verifying these things, I mean, these points. I Just to comment, also, or extend this comment from from Bodur and, and the answer. Um, well, this this data is, of course, as she said, based on OpenStreetMap, and that um, it's contributed usually by the public or sometimes by experts. But uh, in addition, there is the possibility of adding, or or if you add your own layers. It's always the possibility of using, for example, uh, the Facebook artificial intelligence roads that um, it's very precise and well, it's it's done automatically with uh, as, as its, its name says with artificial intelligence. So that is uh, additional uh, resources that uh, could be implemented here and and that will add uh, more validity to to the analysis we can yeah. take the other Thanks questions so much. I, I think my, my question mainly came from uh, some way involved in south, southeast asia uh, well 
a preliminary analysis and uh, we had to do some hackathon in uh, open street map specifically for this exercise and we could see some significant changes in the accessibility due to uh, that, that digitization so i mean i just wanted to make sure that uh, i think uh, that is actually mentioned to people that uh, at least there are those gaps which need to be considered so thanks for that response Thank you very much for all the questions. There are a couple of questions more, Budu. We are really uh, on the limit of time. If you want to go quick, quickly on that, go ahead. If not, we can uh, try to provide answers after. Uh, I don't know if you took a look at the chat. Not yet. Uh, uh, yeah, we can a... share the presentation. And do users need to upload the data sets? Yes. So yes, uh, for this method, uh, the one that I, I, I showed, yes, we need, the user need to upload the user method. Now I will go through the automated one. I will show you the other one. Yes, is the source of these indicators raster product critical? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. We have the uh, resource for the land cover. And uh, as I mentioned, this our source for the land cover is um, just a minute, like land use and land cover maps. Just a second, Budu. Uh, I will. I, I apologize for the, the the time that we are overdue. But uh, whoever wants to still keep going with us, uh, then we will continue, right, Budu? If it's fine yes, with okay. you. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you very much, all. Okay, so uh, now I showed you the. I uh, uh, here we we saw the the accessibility analysis using the uh, default data, and now if we want to do it for automated one, so let's have this test one one one, and then let's try Djibouti. Okay. So here I will use everything automated. I will specify that spatial resolution. Uh, so it will immediately coordinate reference system is uh, uh, meets the, the same with the uh, with the country and I will go for 1000 resolution. Then what is the analysis that we will do? So we will do the accessibility analysis. So here, the digital elevation model, I will automatically acquire, similar for the land cover and for the transportation network, similar to the barrier, uh, no barriers, or here we'll, no, we'll add this as well. And we have for water, we'll add the automated barrier. Sim similarly, we will use the transport network as top important and priority and then we'll go for water and mm -hmm. then for land cover for health facilities for now in the current uh, uh, in this uh, uh, phase one like we have <laughs> the health sites and uh, we will add the dhis2 and other resources so we will acquire the uh, the health facility sets and as i mentioned here you, we can use it as a hybrid you can upload your own health facility data list I will here, I will use the same CSV that I used for uh, the moving speed. And I will not, I will not go for this optional settings and I will run the analysis. So it will heal, it will be queued until it goes. And then I can show you very quickly the Djibouti one. Okay, so here is the accessibility analysis of Djibouti. Here, as I show you, you can see all your input data, either it's in the digital or the automated data uh, analysis or the, the, the other one. So here's the travel time. Oh, okay, what happened? Oh, there's a problem here. Okay. It happened what yeah. always happens in demos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. No, no, I, I'll show you another one. I think Paraguay as well. Let's see in Paraguay.
Okay. So here you can see, this is a did also automated analysis that I've done before. And you can see here the map of the travel time as well. So these are the pixels and the, uh, uh, also you can, you can get it here from, uh, from a table, you can download it. So also you can download it here and maybe move it to the, if you're like a GIS specialist, they can download and get it to the ArcGIS, maybe do some modification and um, other. Um, so here you, you have the choice. Uh, similar, do you want me to go to the, um, access to the, to the other one, uh, Zona Statistics, or take uh, questions? Well, we are really five minutes already past time. I don't know if uh, people want to. Just yeah, like there sure. a lot of people engaged. So uh, if somebody has a question, just copy that. OK. So actually, this is. Um, this is a presentation, and uh, I'm happy to take some questions. Oh, okay, we have a question. Veronique, um, go ahead. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, fantastic features, the uh, automated sets. But I, I, I was wondering if you if you have the input data for all the country that can be uh, selectable directly, then, then could, could, could you have also an option to directly show the accessibility, like, like the standard accessibility layers for all the, the countries rather than uh, asking the users to, you know, if there's no parameters or user inputs here. Uh, do, do you see what I mean? You mean uh, producing accessibility maps, only the output? Yeah, yeah uh, well, yeah, yeah. An, an option to like see, see them directly rather than having to go through select all the uh, default inputs. You, you yeah, so we will have this idea like or like this option in the future for producing accessibility maps. So for people who are, um, this is, can be automated based on the public data. And if there is as well that there's another idea, like if the Ministry of Health accepted to produce or to publish maps or, or, or project, maybe we'll, we'll have it as, uh, as well in, 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 the, in the website or in the landing page of uh, Access Mod Next Generation. So people who are interested only with the results, they can have access to the public results. But like not all the countries, especially for data, for health facility location, it's sometimes it's sensitive data for countries to accept to share. So here is uh, here is the point. Right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. And yeah, really interesting then uh, how, how this is going to carry on for phase two and particularly the scale up. Thank you. We'll do another one when, when, after we finalize the phase two. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Joanna. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Pedro. Thanks, Carlos. I just had a question. Um, I also think another session would be really interesting um, about uh, road speeds. Um, do well actually one question do you does access mod do multimodal uh, accessibility analysis so can can someone do uh, walking and driving within the same um, analysis if the speeds and the roads are defined with certain uh, categories like if you classify your roads that way is that possible well usually um, the a typical analysis includes a, um, walking speeds, usually for the land cover, everything that is not roads. So everything that is out of, of the road network. And there are different speeds for, for walking, depending on the, on the type of land cover. And you also assign a speed, a very specific speed for each type of road that you want to include in the analysis. So that can be always defined, be defined as, as you please, but um, what is suggested is, or what is done, for example, here a lot at the University of Geneva is that the, there is a consultation with experts of the country to, to try to obtain a realistic speed for the type of analysis you want to do, if it's an emergency case or if it's just for the general population. Uh, and, and that's the way you define the travel speed. 
Great, thank you, that's interesting. I have more questions, but I'll follow up later probably. <laughs> Okay, I think we, we reached uh, to the end, right, Kudu? People can reach to you and uh, Carlos if there are specific questions. Uh, thank you very much all for uh, being with us today. Uh, we will follow up, I already wrote in the chat, we will follow up with, uh, with the slide deck from the presentation, the recording, I guess also the data for the tests that you use, Kudu, we can also yes. provide that. Uh, and, uh, and the announcements uh, information that uh, Kuku was, um, was supposed to present but he had to join another meeting we will follow that also in the email uh, so thank you very much for presenting Budu and Carlos thank you very much everyone for participating in our COP today uh, and thank you also for that global for uh, um, facilitating this uh, this COP I wish you a very good rest of the day Thank you. Thank, thank you for your time. And uh, I would like to also uh, thank Philippe that he was at the beginning at the very, very early stage of the project. So thank you, Philippe. And thank you also for your time. I will be sharing everything, uh, all the data and please reach, uh, feel free to reach out to me or Carlos for any question. Thank you, thank you everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.